Well, hi everyone, Ron Valent here. Today's an emergency broadcast. Something is going on quietly behind the scenes that uh, everyone needs to know about and we can participate in to push back on it. Uh, and I'm saying it's an emergency. Well, it, you know, there's an emergency every day now, isn't there? Basically with what's going on, Canada's being burned to the ground right around us. But, uh, you know, everyone has heard about the Great Reset by now. And uh, what the Great Reset uh, will not fully accomplish, what uh, I'm about to talk about will. Uh, all, you know, going towards a UN Agenda 2030. That's the real uh, granddaddy of them all. But these are legs uh, underneath that to uh, further that agenda. And um, what we'll do now is just, uh, it was in the throne speech. It was a one-liner that uh, flew, over, flew over everyone's heads. And uh, I managed to catch it. Uh, even Rebel News that uh, didn't catch what was going on there. So uh, I'd like to play that for you, and then we'll go ahead and talk about it. The government will also move forward to introduce legislation to implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. All right, so uh, you see there that uh, they want to reintroduce uh, the bill for UNDRIP. Now, to give you a little bit of backstory on that, the reason why they're going to introduce this bill it had already been introduced before, back in 2019. I had learned about this uh, UNDRIP, uh, it's United Nations Declarations on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples document uh, at that election time. <clears throat> and um, it has been going quietly uh, behind the scenes uh, because if people knew about it, that they would uh, rise up and stand up against it. Okay, and... Um, even in the debates, uh, in the eight debates that I had uh, with uh, conservative uh, MP Bob Zimmer, he was quiet as a mouse whenever I brought it up, except for a McKenzie, the second last debate in which he admitted that it's been going on for many years and the Conservative Party has adopted it. Well, of course they had, because it had already gone through the House of Commons and it was only brave senators who had been pushing back on it for many months. They must have been under tremendous pressure and uh, they could see the, the problem with the document, and uh, they pushed back on it. And then once the election was called, all of these things that were flying in the air still uh, that haven't been resolved uh, were canceled, and now it's going to be reintroduced. Now, has your conservative MP talked to you about it? Has he mentioned anything about it? No, they won't, because they're going to go along with it. And this is why you have to contact your MP and uh, ask them what they're doing with it and, and uh, raise your concerns. And I will share the concerns with you here right away. Um, so one of the issues, first of all, is that this is a unelected body dictating to Canada the terms. And when you look at the UN, you got at least 150 countries in there that do not share our values as a nation. Okay, and they are dicta dictating these terms of uh, the Aboriginals. <clears throat> okay. One thing to note, though, is that after the election, the federal election in October 21st, 2019, three days after, the B.C. government, uh, they went ahead and adopted it as a province. So this is going on right now in B.C. Uh, that's the only one I know of at this point in time. There might be other provinces who are doing it. It's all done quietly. So you might want to check into your own province to see if it's being done. But here's a, here's a major concern with the uh, document itself besides being uh, from an unelected body, that our uh, corrupt politicians will go ahead and, and further. Uh, it's Article 26, okay, and I'll read it to you. It says that the Indigenous peoples have the rights to the lands, territories, and resources to which they have traditionally owned, occupied, or otherwise used or acquired. Okay, so they can go ahead and uh, say that they've uh, used your land that you're sitting on, that your business is sitting on, that your town is on, your city. And now they will have the rights to those lands. Article 25 kind of goes along with it. It says Indigenous peoples have the rights to maintain and strengthen their distinctive spiritual relationship with their traditionally owned or otherwise occupied and used lands and territories and waters and coastal seas. So basically, it allows them, you know, total full access to all of these things. Now that's why when I was in the debate uh, up in Fort Nelson, uh, an Aboriginal woman came and she was standing up there and she said that uh, we are allowing you to come onto our land. She knows what's going on. And another thing that uh, I should mention is that when I was going to run the election, 
that I spoke with an Aboriginal uh, business owner uh, about uh, running for the PPC. And he says, Ron, I'm way more connected than you are. And uh, I can tell you that in 10 years, we will be taking Canada back. And that was in, uh, two years ago now. So, <clears throat> okay, we have Article 3 as well. It says that the Indigenous peoples have the rights to self-determination. Okay. By virtue of that right, they can freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural uh, development. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, well, that's what's really going on already because you already have the reserves and uh, this is what they're doing on their reserves. But this document here does not talk about reserves. It does not acknowledge what Canada has already established with the Aboriginal peoples and uh, the agreements therein. So this is something completely different. Uh, going on to a couple more here, Article 4 and 5. Okay, so Article 4, it says that the Indigenous peoples, in exercising their right to self-determination, have the right to autonomy and self-government. Okay. Um, I'll go on and read number five, and we'll discuss this. Okay, so Indigenous peoples have the rights to maintain and strengthen their distinctive political, legal, economic, social, and cultural institutions while retaining their right to participate fully, if they so choose, in the political, economic, and social, cultural life of the state. So what you are doing here is that you are uh, establishing that Aboriginals have the right to determine their own political status, uh, their own legal and economic social systems. And uh, and that's not within a reserve. That is basically anywhere. So they could actually be setting this up in the middle of Toronto or Quebec City or any place along those lines. Um, they can be a nation within a nation, as well as uh, fully participating in the other nation that they are within. One of the key issues here that has to be understood is that um, this this document here, UNDRIP, it does not state what an Aboriginal is. There is no definition. Now, I've looked on the UN website, and it kind of gives you a, a definition what you would think it would be. So what can happen here, I think, is that you can have the, uh, the Aboriginals who are coming in from foreign countries coming into Canada, declaring that they are Aboriginals here, walking across your land, and then claiming it. I think this is where it's going to go. So, it's, so, and what has to happen is that the Aboriginal people have to realize that they're dealing with, you know, the United Nations. If they thought that dealing with the uh, the crooks and the uh, corrupt politicians of Canada was bad, they have haven't seen anything yet. They are being used as pawns in order to be able to uh, take over the land and. Uh, and have a big massive land grab for the United Nations. You'll see. Now, another story here to go along with this is that <clears throat> uh, one of the people who was in my riding contacted me. They have a big ranch and they're really out in the woolies, you know, like they're out there in the, st in the sticks. And uh, they would apply to the government to uh, ask for a crown land to rent or to buy in order to expand their farm. And uh, they did it twice and they got back, uh, replied, no problem. The third time they did it, they had to wait an entire year. And when they got their letter back, it basically states that uh, we do not know which Aboriginal band will be claiming the land around your property. So you will have to make an agreement with them, either to buy the land or to rent the land, to hire Aboriginals on your property or on your farm to be able to go and work with that. And there is one other stipulation that I forget right now. But basically, that's what's being done in BC right now as we speak. It's all being divvied out. I know another person who's uh, associated with an Aboriginal member in the Fraser Valley, and uh, it was stated to me that that band is starting to make plans for the entire valley. It's all being carved up. So what has to happen here is um, we need to contact the MPs, especially the conservative, the so-called conservative MPs, and put their feet to the fire and say, why are you going ahead and giving and handing Canada over to this UN Declaration for Aboriginal People. So when the um, Great Reset uh, happens, probably middle of next year, and uh, they will say that uh, you have to surrender your, your property and never own property again, uh, it's going to be, I think, a contract because it's a corporation situation and they are uh, going ahead and contracting with you. If you say no, 
I think this declaration for the United Nations of Indigenous Peoples is going to be the thing that's going to be able to finally wipe out uh, your property rights. So this is extremely important. Uh, please contact your MP, contact your friends, because this is going on right now. They, they probably might have even brought it into the House and haven't told us. That's one question I would ask your MP. Has it already been talked about and why haven't you told us? We're almost at the end of the year and, and we were told that this is going to happen. So, all right, um, go ahead and, and you might want to watch also, I have an UNDRIP video, I'll post a link at the very end of this video. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you need to. It's an interview I did with Prince George Matters and also I link it in with the uh, first debate that Maxime Bernier was allowed in on. And uh, I add my comments within that. And then at the end is a UN Agenda 2030 where we're going. So it's a very important video. All right, well, take care and thanks a lot. And uh, stay safe out there. Bye. I'm Indigenous. How are you? you are illegal here oh, okay. in my country, in my land. So you want to talk about these type of people. What people are you talking about? Well, that's a good question, ma'am. You have been but the only one. And you, and you just dis disrespected my land. How did I disrespect the land? I thought this was the public square. These people are my indigenous people. This is indigenous land. So what's the rule that no, I guess, white people are allowed here? <laughs> Not colonialism. Okay, so I'm just trying to get educated, ma'am. I, I, you say it's indigenous land. What should I do then to respect the indigenous land? People respect our laws and respect the people that are in this sacred circle. Don't come in here and antagonize people and getting paid for it. That's why they're there. They pay you to do it. This is a sacred circle? Yeah. It, it, lo it looks like a, a, a bunch of tents made out of the elements of the petrochemical industry. Yeah? Why? Well... So, if you can see behind me, this tent city where people are staying overnight it's an autonomous zone, and uh, this is not considered trespassing, but somebody simply practicing journalism, simply trying to tell the other side of the story. Any event, folks, welcome to John Tory's Toronto in 2020. There's no other way of sugarcoating it. The lunatics are running the asylum.